I am so glad you are here. I have a great subtraction strategy to tell you about, and we'll get started right after I pour myself something to drink, and I'll meet you at my desk. it will come in really handy. Okay, let's get started. So I have a new subtraction strategy to show you today. It's similar to what we did yesterday, but with a twist. So look at my subtraction problem. Four minus two equals, I don't know, but let's find these numbers on our number line. I see there's the four and there's the two. I'm gonna put a little dot by the four and a little dot by the two. Are they close together? Yeah, they're pretty close together. They're not that far apart. So here's the trick. Instead of counting backwards, we could count on. Remember how we have been practicing counting on before? You start with the smallest number and we count on till we get to our answer. Let's see how much that is. I'm gonna put two in my head, two, and then I'm gonna count on three, four. How many jumps did it take to get to four? Two. Four minus two equals two. Or I started at two and I counted on three, four, and I got to four in two jumps. Do you see that? So when two numbers are closer together, it might be easier for you if you count on instead of subtract. Let's try it again. It's a little bit different strategy, but for some of your math brains, it really clicks. Let's try this. Eight minus five equals, I don't know, Let's find these two numbers on our number line. There's eight and there's five. They look pretty close together, so let's practice counting on to get to eight. So let's start with five in our head and let's count on to see how much more it takes to get to eight. So I'm gonna mark five, put five in your head and let's count on. Six, seven, Eight. How many hops was it to get to eight? One, two, three. So eight minus five equals three. Or I started with five and I counted on three more to get to eight. Five, six, seven, eight. Three fingers. Let's do one more together. Seven minus five equals. Let's find seven and five on my number line. There's five and there's seven. They look pretty close together, so let's count on. I'm gonna put five in my head and let's count on until we get to seven. One, two. How much did it take to get to seven? Two. Seven minus five equals two. I started with five in my head and I counted on six, seven. Two more hops till I got to seven. So seven minus five equals two. Practice a few more subtraction problems where you count on and you might really like it. But let's clear our boards and we're gonna practice subtraction one more way. For this activity, you need to have your tent frames handy. You can look at mine or you can use yours too. Either way, it's okay. So I have a tent frame here. It's all filled in. How, much, how many dots do I have? 10, that's what it is. We really wanna practice our addition and subtraction within 10 because 10 is an anchor number. 
So teachers, we will be referring to 10 and problems within 10 quite a bit in the near future. So we really wanna practice our number bonds to 10. So let's start with this. I'll use this one. How many dots do you see on my 10 frame? Eight, right? Five and three make eight. How many of you saw, ooh, this is 10 and there's two missing. 10 minus two make eight. We can make subtraction problems using our 10 frames. So let's try that. How many dots can we have all together when it's all filled? 10. So let's start with 10 is our whole. You can watch me this time and then if you wanna write, you can write on the next problem. We had 10. We have the potential for 10 full dots, right? How many dots are missing? Two dots are missing. So how many dots are left over? Or how many dots can we see? Eight. 10 minus two equals eight. So what's the other subtraction problem we can write with the same numbers? You got it. Start with our whole is 10. 10 minus eight dots leaves me two extra, right? 10 minus eight equals two. How'd you do? Let's do it again. This time you can write them with me. So I'm gonna pull out, ooh, this 10 frame. How many dots do you see? Three. Can you tell your teacher a subtraction problem and write it down using what you know here? How many of you started with 10? Yes, that's what we're supposed to do. Start with 10 minus, I'm gonna start with the dots I see. 10 minus three leaves me. How many more does it take to get to 10? Remember, if you don't know, just count the empty squares. I see that's a five, six, seven. 10 minus three equals seven. Did any of you write that same problem? What's the opposite? Yes, 10 minus the empty spaces, which is seven, leaves me three dots. Pretty easy, huh? One 10 frame can give me two subtraction problems. And I bet you can even come up with the two addition problems. Can you tell your teacher the two addition problems you can make with seven and three and 10? Super. Let's do one more and then we'll be done. Okay, let's erase this. Oh, do you want a tricky one? Let me see if I can trick you, but I know you're super smart, so you might already know this. Let's go back to this one. Hmm, what is a subtraction problem we can write? Can you tell your teacher what it could be? How many of you had the number zero in your problem? Yes, that's exactly right. How many dots are missing? Zero. So 10 minus zero equals 10, right? Now, what would the other problem be if we could make another subtraction sentence? What if we took all the dots away? Let's write it. 10 take away all the dots. So how many dots are all the dots? 10. 10 take away 10 is zero. How was that? 
Sometimes it's so fun to get zero as an answer. I think it is at least. Anyway, keep practicing your number bonds and I'll see you next time. Bye.